Hello humans! Welcome to the Elementals Project, where I, a wholesome child of the 80s and self-styled sentient manatee, have painted the entire periodic table of elements as fantasy creatures, and I'm taking you along for the ride. Despite my natural tendency to drift to the bottom and start munching on seaweed, I have in fact achieved 35 of these videos so far, woo! Leaving only... 83 to go. Settle in. The paintings may be finished, but the videos are just getting up to speed. As promised last week, we have achieved light and makeup and... And I'm not very good at makeup. But if you want to see how far I've come as a videographer, there's a playlist here somewhere. Fair warning, everything up until about magnesium is... it's not good. But as they say, you have to start somewhere and it, 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 in order to get where you're going. And where we're going? Where are we going? <gasps> Bromine. <laughs> so yeah, this here is Krypton, not Bromine. Don't get confused. I needed to match the edges, so give it a minute. Although everything in each period has a specific color of background, I tried hard to bring in variations of saturation and texture so it doesn't get boring. Case in point, Bromine's background is going to be wild, bright, and water-like. I've said it before, but I was kicking myself when I finished the blue period and then realized I had four mermaids to paint. Initially, this period was going to be green, but that would have looked really weird and polluted. Like when they dye the Chicago River for St. Patty's. Ugh. Granted, cesium and mercury will still end up in a brown setting, but there it kind of works. Brown is a valid color for water, right? They just look like they're in a really silty river. But that's later. <laughs> Onward, the bromine. This is a little too tame. We're going to add a bunch of swirling eddies. And lest I believe that I was a competent YouTuber now, here I'm just out of frame matching the edges with chlorine. Damn it. Anyhow, bromine has many, many applications, one of which is to sterilize hot tubs. It does not break down at high temperatures, and it does kill bacteria, and it is also gentle enough that emptying your hot tub on the lawn won't kill it. My family got crazy stupid lucky when we bought our house in 2015, and it had a hot tub. I have never owned one before, and it would not have occurred to me to buy one. This one is old and a bit gnarly, but I love it ever so much. When it's winter... And the snow comes down in big feathery flakes, that's when we like to go out as a family and soak. Or if we've done yard work and have angry muscles. The heating element broke one February. We went out to soak and found a skating rink. The ice was really clean and pretty and fractal, so at least there was that. The tub stayed broken for most of that year, and we just kept it filled with cold water and let the small ones use it as a glorified wading pool. But when fall came... We got it fixed, and fall has come again, and the hot tub is calling. Bromine is used as a fire retardant in a lot of applications, like half the bromine produced is used to fireproof everything from electronics to children's pajamas. Sometimes they incorporate it into the polymerization stage of plastic production, and then, then the final project will be fire retardant. I thought a mermaid putting out fires would be a little too confusing as a concept, so that's why I went with this much more symbolic bubbles emerging from his hands. Perhaps they are fire suppressing bubbles. Yeah. For a long time, my working handle for bromine was protection because of this, but it never sat quite right because bromine is also, like every other halogen, toxic and many of its older uses have been rendered obsolete. Its tendency to deplete the ozone layer is why we don't put it in gasoline anymore or use it to fumigate houses for pest control. I was at a loss for a title that meant can protect effectively but is also dangerous when misused until I remembered that iodine, the next layer down, is already labeled shield. And suddenly sword arrived in my head, surrounded by angels singing, Duh. 
You can tell in my sketch there that I had initially considered painting bromine as a woman, which is much more concurrent with my comfort zone. More on this in a minute, but first, the tail! Ah, oh, the tail. Bromine salts exist, and I wanted them represented here. I love painting mer-tails, and it's funny to me when I see art that gives mermaids knees. I mean, I know there have to be knees when it's a person in a costume, but why in paintings? What is up with that? I have created a pretty big collection of mermaids myself. There are only four liquid elementals, but I've painted 16 Marvel characters as mermaids, as well as a few seasonal ones, all of them available on Etsy. And up until this project, I guess I kind of thought of merfolk as my thing. And here we go with the salty scales because details matter and stuff. As the project progressed, I found myself using smaller and smaller paintbrushes for the fine detail, which amused me. It's been 400 hours in, and if I had to paint hydrogen or helium again, I think they would look a bit different. Not that I'm displeased with them, just an observation. We all evolve. I never really considered not making him ripped. It just seems to be so him. I don't know how much it shows, but I'm a lot less comfortable painting male bodies than female ones. I gravitate to curves, and the joke has always been, hey, I'm the only model I can afford. Also, I can wrap my head around a lot of different feminine body types, whereas with the males, I tend to lead toward this rippling pectorals aesthetic. It takes a conscious effort for me to be more inclusive of dad bods and such, but I hope it comes off as natural. Our little secret? <laughs> of course, it's moot when it comes to bromine, because he's clearly a dude bro of the highest order. I wanted a guy that would blend in to the MCU, which is only helped by the skin tone, the color of liquid bromine, and his hair is meant to evoke the way the liquid sublimes into vapor, but don't get attached to it yet, I find it difficult to nail down the amount of hair I want him to have. And now it's time to futz about with the highlights and shadows and let my monologue wander. <sighs> I've been doing an Inktober this year, specifically Disktober, where all of the art is meant to be Discworld inspired. This has been enormously cathartic for me, because on the one hand, I have been a Terry Pratchett fan since 1994 when my mom read Weird Sisters aloud at bedtime to my sister and me, and found that for the first time ever she had to hide the read-aloud book during the day, because if she didn't, we would find it and read it to ourselves. <laughs> oh, we were captivated. From Weird Sisters all the way through about Unseen Academicals, which is something like 30 books, I have read that chunk of the series so many times if you read a line aloud to me from any of them while I'm blindfolded, I can tell you which one it is. Usually. Honestly, I've only ever tried this two or three times because for some reason no one is interested in that party trick. Yeah. But anyway. And on the other hand, Disctober is good medicine for me because years ago when I started doing Pratchett fan art, I made a lovely illuminated scroll satirizing the Lord's Prayer, and I sent it to NADW Con to be sold in the charity auction because I couldn't afford to go to the con myself, and I hoped to go to the next one, but Sir Terry died, and I stopped wanting to. But here's the thing. The prayer includes many trademarked terms. I was selling prints of it on Etsy, and I got a cease and desist. The estate had signed an exclusive contract with a merch company, so my career as a Discworld fan artist was tragically cut short. And so, illustrating all these in-book scenes with simple prompts like freedom and love has been just wonderful. We're going to add bubbles now by the bucket load. I'm always tempted to be lazy and stop short of my vision, but somehow it's actually easier to pull out all the stops and go overboard. I wanted lots of bubbles. Bromine is not a half-measures kind of guy. Incidentally, fair warning, but I end up giving him a sword to help with his whole metaphysical persona. I hang it on his back, but I do so off-camera. Super sorry. There were a few paintings I made small but significant changes to one day late in the process, and I didn't bring the camera out for any of it, apparently. At least, I haven't found the footage. If it miraculously turns up, I'll throw it into whatever video I'm currently doing. Just for you. 
In the meantime, envision a sword, please, so the reveal doesn't come as a shock, okay? And say hi to Gallium there and Calcium. A lot of cameos in this shot. Ah, <laughs> the hair. I needed a little less Fabio, okay? His Fabiosity was off the charts. It was terrible. As I look at it from this much later perspective, I am pleased that the rusty orange bromine color looks so nice against the turquoise. His anatomy turned out okay, too, and the shadows and highlights are alright, although I would have preferred the sort of mottling you get underwater. I think I skipped that because I had no idea how to achieve it in acrylics. I've done it in watercolor. Perhaps I should have watched a how-to video, but I didn't, because when you have over a hundred paintings to do and you get obsessy about such things, well, that way madness lies. Next time, I'll model him. For the 40th anniversary, when I'm a cackling crone, I'll repaint the ones that were beyond my current skill level. In the meantime, more bubbles. <laughs> and I'd like to take a moment and appreciate my patrons, of which I have eight, and they are the eight bestest people ever to keep believing in me in the face of all evidence. I love them. You can join them. It was always a given that Bromine's symbol would be a tattoo, but here I'm realizing it needs to be a fancy tattoo. A few more wee details, and we've crossed the finish line. Woohoo! See, there's the sword, like I said. And this has been fun, and I'm so glad you came along. Krypton comes next, and I hope to see you there. And until then, enjoy hot water. Rock whatever bod you've got. Make fearless fan art. And stay healthy. Do I have a sword in here? Oh, that's really hard to reach. And it's so funny because according to my little screen, my little view screen, I'm in focus. But then I look at the playback on the computer and it's like Monet. So here's the thing, folks. I'll use this as an outro uh, if, if, this, if this is as bad as the other ones were, because I can't just keep doing this. Oh, it does not look, it doesn't look right. Oh, well. Love you. I did my best. It's going to have to do, guys. It's going to have to do. This is the best I can do. So, 